Hey everybody, welcome back to Kimball's Corner. Um, today, since I had a couple requests to do some marker stuff, so I'm going to use my Jane Davenport Smooth Markers, upside down label. Um, they're empty because I pulled all of my markers out already to swatch onto some plain old printer paper. So it's not marker paper, it's not mixed media paper, it's just plain old printer paper. It might suck on printer paper, I don't know. But I figured everyone has access to printer paper. Um, but it also works well in Jane Davenport journals, obviously on Bristol board is really nice, and obviously on actual marker paper, which has a special backing to help the ink spread sideways and not bleed through. This will bleed through like crazy, so I'm doing it on this brown little clippy board thingamabob. So I took my colors and I separated them into how I'm going to use them because I use them kind of fast and I don't want to have to like search for them. So these are the colors I picked out for his skin tone. And this is a drawing I did a long time ago. I just printed it off on my computer. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the inks will stand up to the markers. I haven't tried any of this, but I just, you know, thought I'd give it a go because if it works, how much fun is it going to be to just print off a bunch of my line work and have a kind of like a little coloring book thing happening. So, with my little color chart, this thingy off to the side, let's get started. Kind of just lay out my markers, and I usually open all my markers pretty much at once because I do use them like kind of quickly because I overlay them to help them blend better. So for his skin, he's pretty pale. I'll just do this. Chick will be for like the flats, and then flock will be for some pink undertones, and then preen, which I opened the wrong end of preen. I like to use the brush end. Whoop! I like to use for shading. So, let's just get into it and hope for the best! So I like to just do a first even layer. And it looks gray because the paper's wet, but once the alcohol on the marker dries, it'll lighten up. And like the real color of the marker will shine through. Okay, so now that I have his skin all colored in, he's a little skanky, so he shows his belly. All right, so now I'm gonna take the flock. Oh, what the flock? And I'm gonna add just some pink into his cheeks, around his ears, touch up his nose. Ooh! And then I can kind of merge that out with this. And you can also go back over with the same color to create a little bit of shading. Go back in, maybe shade in a little here. This is still the same color chick that I started with. Just kind of adding a second layer. and start building up the layers. Little kitty laying on his hand. Looks weird. Looks weird. So now we're gonna take, I'm gonna actually cap flock so I don't accidentally grab that one again. We are going to take preen and use it as a shading and then we'll kind of draw out the color using chick. Although on this side of the face, it's just gonna be all preen. So I don't really need to draw the color out. But once we get down to here, I'm gonna wanna bring it out. A little shadow from his hat. And again, the paper does turn like a dark gray. So it'll look a little muddy. But don't worry about it. And I just kind of go back and forth with the markers. And you know, you can get really into it and use a bunch of markers, like of different shades and values. If you want to get that into it. A little shading under his nose. But I mean, you can see like as it's drying and lightening up, like that the harsh lines on his face and cheek and stuff have all faded. 
And I mean, markers, you always get like a little of that marker look. And also I am, like I said, drawing just on photocopy paper, which is not amazing for markers, but you can definitely use it. A little shadow under his jeans, back of his calf. Just kind of smooth it out. All right, and now I'm going to use wing. It's a, it's a really pale purple color, and I just use this for like actual hard shadows. Like where his hat is. We're just gonna add it in up there. Maybe inside his ear a little, under his lip, maybe a touch under his nose. A little in the eyelid area, just under the kitty's chin, just a little down here would be a little, a little darker, and then maybe just like a touch under where his jeans would be casting a shadow. Oh, I took, I took the cap off one side and put it on the other, because that's how brilliant I am. Um, also, I guess I could talk about these markers a little bit. They're the Jane Davenport Smooth Markers. This is Chick. Um, it comes with a really lot of great flesh tones. I mean, you got a lot from dark to light, which I'll be using those for my backgrounds. Um, they have a bullet end and a brush end, which I'm very grateful for because I don't like the chisel. I'm not against the chisel. I'm just not very good with it. So I would have to do a lot of practicing. All right, so we're gonna call his skin good for now. I might go back, I don't know. Also, a lot of people really like to use colored pencils over the top of markers. Apparently, it's just wonderful. Let's do the cat. It's a kitty cat, and it meow meow meows, and it meow meow meows. So I'm using the two grays. It's Dodo and uh, Galignol. Galignol? I don't know. It's a new word, I'm gonna have to look it up, but right now, not gonna happen to add just like a purple undertone. Let's just do that first, just because. It's a purple kitty. Meow, meow, meow. I'm just gonna use it where the shading would be. I should have given it white paws. And I can be a little rougher, not rougher, but less smooth, I guess, with these, cause it's fur. So I can add, you know, that furry texture. And with markers, I like to start light and go darker. And with this, I'm just going to color the whole putty tat. Leave the cap off that and pull out the dark gray. And I'm basically just going to go back in where the uh, purple was and maybe like try and blend it out a little bit and also just give some shading to the little kitty cat. And it's nice with markers, you'll notice if you use like water-based, like Crayola markers, if they're, if they're water-based, they will eat the paper up really badly. Whereas alcohol does not. So, you know, magic. Also known as science. Cover that little belly in. All right, a little tushy action, hind leg, little, little foot. And then just a tad on the tail. Cute little kitty. I actually drew this from a photo I took of Rocky laying with our cat Mason. Adorable. You know, about, oh geez, five years ago? Oh, um, probably longer than that. A long, long time ago, when we were just kids. Put those over there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of a really bright pink. This is Pretty Flamingo. It is the brightest pink. I'm just gonna use it for the kitty's nose. 
just because it's such a tiny dot, I figured I could go crazy with the super bright color. Sorry, I really needed some coffee just then. It's, it's one of those do or die kind of things. So for his shirt, I wanted to do like a peacock blue t-shirt with a long sleeved shirt underneath. Actually, I don't know if I want to do... Yeah, we'll do peacock blue for the t-shirt part. So I'm using peacock blue and parakeet. Because I can. Alright, so again, I'm going to start with the light color. And we'll just start filling in the t-shirt. Now, I'm going to add in the peacock. I don't know, I put this lid back on because I'm gonna wanna blend it out just a little bit. So this background area, peacock is so pretty. Let's see. I can probably just actually color all this in since it's in the background. And then I might go and add like a little of the dark gray into it for shading. I didn't actually test to see if these colors would blend. I was just hoping. You know how I do things here. We just hope for the best. Um, do dark under here. And then I'm going fast with a little streak and blend a little bit better. not loving the way these colors are going together. So I may, may do something else. We'll see. But I'm gonna do a hard shadow under his arm. And then just a couple of the wrinkles from his shirt. In with the lighter of the two, the parakeet. Kind of just push those colors that way. Really work it and try and blend them together a little bit better. Another thing, markers are squeaky. Yeah, they didn't blend as well as I was hoping. Maybe I'll just go over Parakeet and then add some gray into it. Or go over it with Peacock. Not entirely sure. Because right now it looks like he's wearing a messed up Hypercolor shirt. So, what did we learn to test the colors <laughs> beforehand? All right, and now I'm gonna just take the grays. Cross your fingers, everybody. That's how the back's looking. That's not bad. I thought it'd bleed through a lot more than that. All right. So I'm going to take the little, or, is this the darker gray? Just do this in the darker spots. See how it's going to react. Maybe get this lighter one out. I'm going to, this is all new to me. So, you know, let's learn together. Also, um, the paper can only absorb so much, so it may, it may come to a point where it's just not gonna take the color anymore. I say that because I feel like I've reached that point in a lot of this. But it is definitely helping. This part I don't really need to blend out, I just need to make a little shadow. Bring down some of those wrinkle lines. Just kind of drag that out. I told you, those few of you that requested the marker for me to do markers, that I'm not very good with them. But I do have fun with them, that's for sure. At least you can learn what to do and what not to do while watching. All right, so I have Budgie 
and Toucan. And Toucan is very bright. And I love it. All right, let's pull out Budgie. Let's hope this works. Blend it in with the two can. It's so hard because the paper turns so dark when it's when the colors first laid down. So I'm not sure how well it's blending. and working with two or three markers open at once. Not uncommon for me. So if you're not comfortable with that, you do you. But with markers, I tend to like to work faster. Why? I have no real reason. I forgot to color this part of his shirt. All right. Okay, let's go fly a kite. Have a sip of coffee. Let it dry a little bit. How about we start on those jines? Let's get them jines. So I have Bluebird. Bluebird. And what do we got here? Fairy Wren there. A nice vibrant color and a nice light color. So let's go over the whole of his jeans with the light color. Okay. Oh, grr. now let's bring in the darker blue and add in some color, some nice dark color. Blending some of this out, see if I can get that to work. It's hard to do the big gradients. I feel like I should have just done an extra dark with this color, but too late now. Those did not want to blend at all. So, let's try the gray. Try the light gray first. Oh, I should've just used the gray with the blue, that's nice. Learning as I go. I should take notes. Let's try the dark gray, see if I can, you know, really muck it up. I'm not adding it everywhere. Just here and there. There's also like a lot of people do this technique where it's called tip to tip, where you touch the markers, you know, tip to tip to kind of blend those colors. 
I'm not so skilled. I don't know if I would do that right. I also feel that this part of the paper has taken <laughs> taken on all the ink it's gonna take on. But yeah, the uh, so just for future reference, the uh, bluebird with the grays works really well for like a nice jean color, because that dark blue was wasn't wanting to work. Didn't want to play nice. Just want to darken that in. It was a little dark or a little bright. And then I can just go back over it with the blue. And one day, all of this marker will dry. Oh, um, and his. This is his underwear, like the strap from his boxers showing through. So not a lot of color on that. All right, he's gonna wear a brown cap. That's the kind of cool dude he is. So I'm just gonna grab Hatchling and Twitter. I have not learned my lesson. I'm just gonna go right in. We're hoping it'll turn out. And I can also go darker brown too. There's a lot of browns involved here. I may have to grab them. These look a little a little similar. Let's grab putting the lightest color away, grabbing a shade darker. Which one do we got here? Nest. Just a little bit darker. And then I'll blend that out with the medium brown that I have. I think it's Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. All right, got himself a fancy little hat. So cute. Okay. Hmm, with these pillows, let's give him a bright pink pillow because he deserves it. We'll just go, we'll try flock and brood first. Oh, what the flock? I can feel my coffee kicking in. <laughs> Getting the jitters. All right, go and do some shading. It's a pillow, it's lumpy. All right. We're gonna just do a really pale blue for his socks. Or no, well, actually let's try flight. I think flight's a little more, nope. It's like a periwinkle. Wing is the purpley color, all right. Just gonna go in with this color. And then I might do a touch with the light gray, just cause it's a little bit lighter. If I had a color this blender, <coughs> a colorless blender that helps take a, a pale color out to white, but I don't have one. I'm not so fancy. Oh, can get the white of his Siggy. And I suppose the other part, maybe I'll use like a Twitter, there's not like an orange stereotypical Cigarette butt color. Not that I really know, I always just think they're orange. Um, and while we're at it, I mean, just add an orange stripe. And by orange, I mean brown. Um, all right, let's work on these pillows up here. It is Mountain Gem. Woo! 
Ooh, that is mountainous and jemmy. Let's mix that with flamingo and something crazy gonna happen. Let's get flamingo out here first though. It's gonna remind, I, I'm hoping it'll remind me of those like satiny shiny pillows that are satiny and shiny. I know, I'm good at descriptions. I like that though with like the black hair on it. Not gonna lie. Also, I do have a lighter purple, which I can't, I feel like somebody's knocking on the door downstairs. Yeah. You can see how much I care about somebody knocking on my door. Not people. All right, well, that's interesting. All right, this part is the inside, like the pillow, like the actual pillow. So just like a pale gray will be suffice. And then the pillowcase itself, I'm just trying to find like a pinkish color to complement the green of his shirt. Without, you know, using the other super strong pink. Do some crest for shading. Ooh. All right. And that's probably a pillow down there. We're just, let's just pick a random color that's not even a part of this. Yep, that's what that is. Okay, is he all colored? Let's do Bluebird. Like the whites of the eyes. But that works, that sets him back just a little bit. So for the background, let's get all the markers that I'm probably not gonna use for the background out of the way. We'll start with egg. Egg. And there will be some time lapse in happening because this is gonna take a while. I don't mind if the background gets splotchy. I mean, it's just a background. There's nothing super exciting happening there. Now let's take my darkest. I think Hover is my darkest brown. And after that will be Nest. Will this work? We don't know. All right, bring on Twitter. Then my Twitter might be dying. Or maybe I'm just coloring too fast. Oh, no, I feel like it's dying. Hold on to what we got. I'm just kind of mixing all the colors now. I don't want it to look like an accident. <laughs> Where's my magic pen? I know I said it didn't bother me, but it does. It does just a little bit when it's so obvious like out there. When it's in the picture, I guess I don't really care. How's the back looking? Ooh, it's a nice ghosty color. Now you can like sketch over this and create like somewhat of a different picture, but I'm not doing that. All right, so it's had sufficient dry time. Um, I'm going to go over top with colored pencils and see what all the fuss is about. Yeah, it is nice. It does lay over really nicely. And it kind of just pumps up the color a bit. I mean, I am, again, using crappy paper. But I ain't mad at it. Oh, the white really likes to draw on top. So I'm just trying to lighten and blend in the pink. But if the white goes right on the markers, it's like very white. Like that. Add a little pink to the nose. A little pink to the lippy. Do a little eyebrow highlight. Or brow bone, not eyebrow. All right, little tendons on the hand. Top of the belly. Yeah, just a little bit there. All right, let's see how it works on the blue. Just white on everything.
definitely adds a nice texture. It turns it into more of a denim look. But it does cover up the black lines, which I don't love. All that fraying is usually a lighter color. All right, added some highlights in here. I like that I can just go over it all with white because I'm too lazy to swap out colors. But it definitely does help. All right, well that was fun. So there is that, a fun random marker drawing with a touch of colored pencil. I'd like to thank you guys for uh, joining me on this random experiment with smooth markers. First for everything. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you give smooth markers or any alcohol markers a go. Maybe your piece will turn out better than mine. <laughs> Uh, thanks for joining, and I will see you next Friday. What? It might be a bonus video. I figured it would be more fun to also show you that you can just go crazy with the colors. Okay, not really crazy, whatever. But you don't have to worry so much about blending. Like, it's just fun to slap down some color and see what you can get. So, with that being said, Let's just pop these suckers open, start pulling out random colors, and creating. You know me, we got do face. I'm not worried about coverage, I'm not worried about blending, I'm not worried about the colors being friends with each other, because you don't have to be a marker wizard to have fun with markers. And once I'm done with the color, I'm just gonna set it aside. Probably won't use it again. That's how crazy I am. This is kind of fun to just let loose. A couple of well meaning strokes it can be very effective. I don't want to put a lot of green in her face just because, you know, moldy look. It's not very sexy. Ooh, there's a little fly in here, it scared me. It scared me, come out of nowhere. If I actually crushed that fly with my hand, I would have freaked out. Just keeping it very loose. I mean, the tighter you get with the artwork, the more people are gonna say, oh, that's a mistake. So if you keep it loose, people will not expect perfection. Warms up all the cool purples and stuff, helps tie in a lot of the color. get it out of my system go crazy with the markers oh I'm sorry I didn't get it all on screen oh, I need a better camera setup do apologize for that but I had fun uh, I hope you learned that you can just go crazy with markers doesn't have to be a masterpiece it can just be fun and I will see you guys later bye for reals this time